like how much does it how much does it ballpark do you know roughly how much it costs in terms of listing fees with the exchange lawyer fees accountant fees all of that stuff well listing fees to be honest and i i say this with a somewhat heavy heart we are by far the cheapest fee when it comes to these things so really we don't you know if you're talking about lse versus nasdaq or nyse okay there are differences but they're not material in terms of the entire cost of the transaction now underwriting fees are double to triple in the us what they are in europe and there was actually a an oecd um news report today saying that actually pointing to the level of underwriting fees seven to eight percent in the u.s versus you know for the bigger deals in the uk probably two to three for the smaller deals probably four to five percent it is what it will cost you in the uk so it's a much it's much cheaper from an underwriting perspective but that's just one part of it then you've got all the other fees for the lawyers and accountants and i'd say that in the us you're probably going to spend at least fixed fees at least a couple of million dollars to go public where in the uk that'll probably be in the range of three to five hundred thousand dollars um, of fixed fees to go public now that that's just the, the the mechanism of getting public now if you to stay public you're probably talking a couple of million dollars in the us of compliance costs um, and also things like directors and officers insurance because quite frankly in the US it is very common to be sued as a public company even if you do nothing wrong your share price can go down and people will sue you and a lot of that activity is actually frivolous and nothing to do with something you've done wrong that happens a lot lot less in Europe and so the costs associated with that with a lot less so say a couple of million dollars of ongoing costs in the US minimum this is a couple of 100,000 of incremental ongoing cost as a result of being a public company in the UK. So when you see the delta of these kind of the differences between the markets, you can understand why we can have a company, a tech company with five, five, say five million dollars of annual revenue actually think it can be worthwhile to go public in the UK. And we do see companies of that size go public, I'd say between five to $75 million, we see a lot of companies in that revenue range going public in the UK from a tech perspective. In the US, I think the rule of thumb is you need to have at least $100 million of annual revenue and substantial growth, probably you know 50% plus annual top line growth before you go public. So there is a completely different mindset, I think, as well. I think the other thing to mention when we're actually talking about mindset is from an investor base perspective, the investors in the US are not really keen on investing in small cap companies. And when I talk about small cap companies, I'm talking about the sub $500 million range. They really expect companies to, have, to be larger before they invest in them, and they have high, higher liquidity thresholds as a result. So you've just got a different mindset from, from the investor base as well. So if you think about the US, and actually this applies to Latin America as well, mm -hmm. it's where the ecosystem just really isn't there for companies of this size to be public quite frankly, whereas in the UK it is. And I think the, the thing to mention about the UK is the UK investor is very used to investing in international com international headquartered companies and from across the region as well. Why is that, do you think? Well, I mean, even if you look at the largest companies in the UK, they're not very UK-centric. And that's one of the reasons why Brexit ha hasn't really impacted the share price performance of the UK in the way that people expect it, because you look at the underlying revenue exposure of these companies, and they're international. Um, so, for instance, over the last three years on AIM, the growth exchange that we run, a third of the companies went public were international. But even if you look at the UK ones, <laughs> when you dig deeper, they'll have a lot of overseas revenue. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we, are, we are a relatively small country, and we've always been had a lot of international exposure in the companies we have listed there. And we're the most international market. When you look at the number of international companies we have listed on our on aim in the main market we have that's more than any other single exchange in the world so we are the most inter and, the, and the investor base is also much more international so for a u.s company listing on a u.s exchange you're probably going to 80 to 90 percent of your investors will come from the u.s hmm. if you list in london you're probably going to have 30 percent uk 30 percent us you know and 40 percent from the, the rest of the world so it's just a much more international uh, orientation from a market perspective